what I'd like to do right now is uh, just talk about some, uh, some kinematics when we're dealing with circular motion. Uh, and unlike uh, what we may have done last year, this is a little bit more complicated. First of all, what is uniform circular motion? What does UCM mean? What does uniform mean? Same, yeah, similar same. So uh, what is the same? And I'll give you an example. Let's just assume this uh, wheel's going around like so. And let's just assume that there's no friction so that there is, uh, it's going around uh, without any friction. In other words, not slowing down. Uh, this is uniform circular motion. What is uniform? Same. The speed. The speed is the same. So here's my question to you. Thumb up if yes, thumb down if no. Is there that blue tape that's going around and around and around, we're assuming no friction, is that accelerating? Thumb up if yes, thumb down if no. Is this blue tape accelerating? Is it changing speed? No. no. Is it changing direction? No. Yeah. It's accelerating. It's changing its velocity. And what I'm going to show you right now is that uh, in uniform circular motion, and actually any time, uh, oh, well, let's do this first. Uh, when it's going around in uniform circular motion, and I'm just going to stop frame right here. Let's say just stop action photo. I want you to point in the direction of the acceleration when this piece of tape is right here. Which direction is it accelerating when it's right there? Okay, so the acceleration is centripetal. That means towards the center. AC is towards the center. Even if it's going at constant speed, the acceleration is towards the center. And what I'm going to prove to you right now is that, in fact, it is towards the center. And, in fact, the value of it is this. Uh, AC is equal to the speed squared over R, the radius of the circle. That's what I'm going to show you guys right now. I'm going to prove that to you. And I'm going to... Uh, derive that mathematically for you right now. That will do a little bit more, not much more than that, but that'll get us started. Okay, so here is the proof of that AC equals centripetal acceleration. Is Remember, it's centripetal towards the center, or center-seeking, uh, is V squared over R. So I've got an object here represented by these black dots right here and right here. Um, it travels in a clockwise circle, going around this way, of radius R at constant speed. Uh, now, the, the two dots in the diagram represent the object at two positions, which are an infinitesimal time apart. What does infinitesimal mean? Infinitely small. Uh, but in order to, if I drew them infinitesimally apart, we couldn't see that there are two dots. So I'm actually, I, I exaggerated the distance apart there. So um, they're only a time delta t, which is infinitesimal apart. Now, uh, of course, uh, in calculus, what could we call that instead of delta t? dt. That is an infinitesimal delta t is dt. Okay. The space between, between them is greatly exaggerated so that we can see what's happening. And I've got these two radii drawn right there. Okay. And uh, the angle theta is also infinitesimal. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw velocity vectors for each dot and label them vi and vf. So I'm going to do this in this one, VI, I'll do in red. Now, there's one word that describes the direction of the velocity as it's going around in a circle. What one word, no matter where it is, if an object's going around in a circle, what's its direction of velocity? Tangential. So I'm going to draw a perpendicular to the radius. So here's the velocity. I'm going to label that V initial with a vector sign over it because it's a vector, V initial right there. V final, I'm going to do in blue, and it's also tangential, but it's like this. V final. Okay, got V initial, I got V final, trying to draw them tangentially. Okay, now, uh, we did that and we labeled them. Now we want to find the change in velocity, delta V. V final minus V initial. We can express that as V final plus negative v initial, right? Anybody have a problem with that? Just expressing subtraction as the sum of uh, one number and the negative of the other number. Is that, are we all cool with that? Okay, so that's, that's right here. Now I'm going to add these two vectors simply by placing v final and negative v initial head to tail. So let's go back to the, uh, let's do v final right here. 
Here is V final. Whoops, let me see if I can draw a straight line here. I'll have to work. V final. There's V final, and then I'm going to draw V initial. If I want to add V initial, should I attach V initial or negative V initial? Should I attach negative V initial at the tail or the head? If you're adding two vectors, do you attach them head to tail or tail to tail? Head to tail. So I'm going to pin pin the tail on the head here. Here's V. In, uh, this is negative V initial. All I did was I just drew that the opposite of that. Let me get a little bit more accurate here. The direction. Okay. This is negative V initial. Okay. We're cool on that. Any questions on that? So I'm going to add these two, and I'll use a different color for the sum of the two. Let's see if I can use this green. And here is the sum of the two vectors. So this is the resultant right there in green. Uh, and there we go. And this is what I'm going to call delta V because it's the, it's the change. V final minus V initial. It's delta V. Okay, cool. Uh, now, if we look at that, look at that delta V right there. And of course, I could put it right over here if I wanted to. You can move vectors wherever you want. You can move it from here to there. Which direction is that delta V in? What's the one word that would describe the direction of that delta V? Centripetal, center seeking or towards the center. So the delta V is towards the center. What does that mean also must be towards the center? The acceleration is in fact towards the center. So now we see the direction that it is uh, towards the center, but now we need a magnitude. Now. Uh, the angle formed by V final and negative V initial. What I'm looking for now is what is this angle right here? What's that angle right there between those two? And why is that true? Give you a hint. Between these two radii, the angle is theta. Now it's an infinitesimal. I've, I've drawn it way too big here. But if this is theta between this R and this R, and V initial is perpendicular to this R, and V final is perpendicular to this R, what must be the angle between these two things? Theta, it, and it'll be theta right here, uh, between V initial and V final must be theta. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to do the whole geometrical argument, but it is true that this is also the angle theta. That is also theta right there. So what we have here, so the angle formed by V final and negative V initial is in fact theta. Now we're going to com uh, complete the triangle made by the radii. These two radii, we're going to complete that. I'm going to use a, a yet another color here. Let's see if we can use uh, this. Some of you guys can see orange. Okay. Here is, this is the displacement. And again... This is an infinitesimal displacement, which I'm going to label delta x. That displacement right there is delta x. Uh, okay, so I've got that, and let's see, we'll call it delta x. The triangle formed by r, r, and delta x, this triangle, is an isosceles triangle, which is similar to this triangle. Now all we got to do is figure out, uh, well, let's do this. The magnitude of these, are these different in magnitude? V final, right over here, and V initial. Are they different in magnitude? They're the same in magnitude. I'm just going to call both of those. Uh, I'm just going to call them V. The, the speed, this is going at constant speed, so the speed isn't changing. So we'll just call those V. That's the magnitude of both. And next, I'm going to set up uh, a, uh, a equation based on the similarity of these two triangles. The ratio of the magnitude of delta V to V. So delta V magnitude to V is equal to, here's the question, what two sides are the corresponding sides on this triangle? Aha, uh -huh. because the V is the, uh, the, the uh, sides right here. The, I guess they call them the uh, legs of the isosceles. So this is the leg, and this is the, uh, the opposite of theta. Uh, that's going to be, same over here, delta X over R. 
So that, does everyone buy that by similar triangles? That is a true statement. Are we good on that? Cool. The last thing we got to do, so I'm just going to write it right here. The ratio of delta V to V is equal to the ratio of delta X over R. Finally, all we got to do is solve for delta V and divide by delta T. What do I do to solve for, del for delta V? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm going to go to purple here. You just multiply both sides by V. That gives us delta V is equal to delta X and times, we got to put that delta, that V over here, and this is over R, and then I'm almost done with this derivation. All I got to do now is as follows. Divide both sides by delta T. So that all I'm going to do right here is put delta T over here, and then delta T over here. Now I'm almost completely done. What is delta V over delta T better known as? Acceleration. In fact, because this is the instantaneous acceleration, only because delta V and delta T are both approaching what? Zero. Yeah, they're both infinitesimals. The ratio isn't zero, but these are both approaching zero. So the acceleration, in fact, we call this, because we proved that it's towards the center, that is, in fact, the centripetal acceleration. What is delta X over delta T better known as? It's, and it's, if these are infinitesimal, that's the instantaneous velocity or speed. So that is V times V. So this, this right there is V, and that's V over R, so we're basically done. What we have is AC equals V squared over R, QED. There it is. So we have now proven that the centripetal acceleration is V squared over R right there.